everybody, how's it going? So today we're gonna check out optical compressors here on Audio Basics. And all an optical compressor is, is it uses a little photoelectric cell and a light bulb instead of a transistor for its detector circuit. The light bulb gets brighter depending on how hot of a signal you feed it. And there's a little photoelectric sensor that reads how bright that light bulb is and that stomps down on your audio. And uh, this has been made famous, you know, by tube compressors over the years and whatnot. And what I've got here is a uh, an SA2A optical compressor from Stem Audio. And um, basically, it's a recreation of the classic, but it'll only cost you 890 bucks on a pre-order right now. And I've been using this for the last couple months on a bunch of different sources, and it's really cool. And I thought I'd uh, run it through four different sources for you guys. We're going to check it out on snare drum, bass guitar, a sung vocal, and then a uh, voiceover as well. Because it uses an optical circuit, it's got a very slow attack, and because it's a tube-based circuit, it can get pretty warm and crunchy. It's cool on full mixes, but unfortunately, I don't have two of these, so I can't run them in stereo uh, to show you on full mixes, but um, on something like a bass guitar, it's really badass. Same with a vocal. And um, I've just been recently using it on snare, and I'm going to show you guys what that's all about. Um, if you guys remember, a couple weeks ago, I did that piece with Cam Flurry, uh, showing off the Earthworks mics, and um, I've got a, a little clip from that right now. Now, that's no compression going on. I'm going to throw this on. As you can see, there's a little bit of gain reduction going on. And again, it's that slow attack uh, that uh, the light bulb gives the detector. So it's going to let a lot of that transient through and just give a really nice snap to the sound. Um, the one thing I've got to caution you, if you're using this in a digital system with, with uh, drums, is you're going to need some kind of a back-end attenuator because the signal coming out of this thing is pretty damn hot. And um, what I've been using is I've been using that, that little Behringer... Um, you know, sketchbook mixer so to speak um that i've been using on guitars i just fed it into a line in here and just be able to keep the signal a little bit more under control going back into the computer so if we solo that up and uh, let's just go dry here for a minute we've just got the reinsert going on here yeah like kudos to reaper for the reinsert plug in this thing is great it does automatic delay compensation and all that sort of thing i've been using it uh, a bunch as of late and it's it's really awesome and you don't have to sit there and realign anything it's kind of awesome so we're going to punch this in just show what's going on we've got our signal coming out of the daw and then back in turn it off you can see it just gets really crunchy now the sa2a and most opto compressors have real simple controls we've got gain peak reduction and a limit and compress button. Now, if you guys remember, the difference between limiting and compressing is basically your ratio. And if you don't know what that is, make sure you check out my how to use a compressor video and I kind of lay it all out for you. So yeah, basic controls. It's really hard to make this thing sound bad. I mean, we've got a lot of peak reduction going on. If I dial that back, that's still getting pretty rude. We can snap that in. And if we crank up the gain, this is where it starts to get nasty. Now we're getting a lot of artifacts and whatnot, a lot of bleed. We're starting to bring all that noise floor way up. But that is pretty trashy. Let's check that in the mix. That's pretty out of control. I might want to dial that back just a bit. Now that sounded pretty reasonable right there. And again, if we, we throw it in the limiter mode, I, think, I don't think we're going to get that big of a difference. We're going to crank up the peak reduction all the way.
pretty interesting effect. Uh, once again, I got to thank everybody at Earthworks for sending me that DK7 kit. Um, those are just truly spectacular drum makes, and I got to thank Cam Flurry as well for that. So we're going to switch over to bass guitar now, and I've already got this set up and routed. I've spent my whole morning getting all this figured out, how I was going to hook all this up and shoot it. So we're just going to keep it in compression mode here, and I'll show you. I've got, once again, I've got the reinsert on the uh, bass guitar here, and we're just going to take a quick listen to this. Not much going on here. Oh, yeah, you can hear that. You can just hear that tube. You can just hear that tube grime kick in there. And uh, this definitely adds a lot of character to a bass guitar. That can get pretty snarly. Now, if you see the uh, the peak reduction meter isn't jumping around all over the place, it's very, very, very steady. So a little goes a long way, I think, in where it comes to this. Just cranking up the peak reduction a little bit here. And we're going to take a listen to this just kind of in and out of the mix here. Let me slow this up. We can hear what's going on before and after. So that's with the SA-2A on. And that's with it out. Up. Oh. And in. Yeah, the bass just kind of disappears without it, so definitely great at bringing up, it's definitely great at bringing up that nice warm bottom end. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing about this compressor is the harder you hit it, the grimier it's going to get. So um, that's a huge bonus, especially for like metal tracks and that kind of thing. If you want to kind of add a little bit more panache to the guitars, you can just kind of dial this and let's see what we can get here. Yeah, you can hear that, especially on those turnaround notes. Wow, does that ever grime things up. Check that out one more time. I think that's going to be one of my new favorite tricks on bass guitar. Holy smokes, does that ever sound cool. All right, moving on. We're going to check out vocals. So going to take a look at a sung vocal right now, and I've got Siegfried here uh, doing it from the Moon on the Water track. And uh, Siegfried is just a super, super dynamic vocalist, and uh, this compressor might be pretty cool, but I got to watch, again, once again, watch the peaks, because uh, this is kind of slow, but can definitely add some character to the vocal, especially when he really leans into it here. So here's with it off. What a fool! I don't know we're going to dial this in a little tomorrow, bit. What it's like to be out. Whoa! Okay, we're going to try this on a full mix for a second. And I'm going to say, you know, I did, I did a lesson there a couple weeks back where I, I used the SA-2A in conjunction with the Distressor. You know, one was set for a super fast attack, and then the SA-2A just kind of rides it. And for a super dynamic performance like this, maybe not so much, especially when the heavy kick in. Um, I would definitely want, I would certainly want to pair this up with a faster comp. But it still adds a pretty nice effect, especially on the slow bits here. Check this out. Tomorrow, 
Now, let's slow this up for a second. Check this out. You know, even though the needle's getting buried, it's not distorting, which is pretty impressive. I don't know about tomorrow what it's like to be out. Oh, I was sure couldn't let myself to go. Pretty damn cool. I can see why this thing's so freaking popular. Why you see this in, in huge studios the world over. Wow. That is really, really cool. I got to start using that more on my vocal productions. Come to think of it, I got to do more vocal productions in here. Most of the stuff's just basically instrumental at this point. But, uh, well, we'll see what we can do. We, we, got, uh, we got protocol coming down in a couple weeks. We'll see what's up. So as you can hear, I've got my voiceover headphones on. I just want to hear what's going on um, in the mic. So you guys can hear exactly what's going on. So right now, if you watch the screen, it's peeking out real easy. That's no problem to drive the signal into the reds. I've kind of bypassed my output um, attenuator right now, and I'm going just straight in from this mic into the SA-2A just to show you guys what's up. And so the big thing, of course, is peak reduction. We want to get the peaks under control. Is there anything going to happen right there? Check. One, two. See, now I'm kind of stomping on the voice, and that's pretty sick. I've even got a limit mode. Let's take that down to just compression mode. I'm not hearing a huge difference. You know, if you guys are hearing something, let me know. But we can crank up the amount of compression here, and that's sounding pretty sick, actually. I really like that. And if we back off the uh, peak limiting a little bit, check two, check two. Yeah, okay. Now we're going to get into the red. So this thing, if you want to keep a vocal really under control, you got to crank up that peak reduction. But I'm not hearing a huge hit in terms of quality. You know, you can really crank this over and it's not going to sound bad at all. It's really got that wonderful kind of FM radio announcer kind of voice, except this is tubes. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. But... Sounds pretty badass for voiceover, I gotta say. Now, by way of comparison, let me uh, let me just kind of unpatch this, and you can hear the voice without any compression at all. And there we go. <laughs> that's uh, that's with. 35 dBs of gain on there. I think I got to crank on another 10 or 15. There's another 10 dBs. There's 15 dBs of gain right there just to get me into this, kind of the ballpark, but it's nowhere near as smooth as what it was. So that just shows what this thing's going to do with, with voiceover. All right, so there you go. Dead Simple Controls, uh, pretty damn impressive result. Don't forget, you can get the Stam Audio SA-2A compressor for $890 US on a pre-order if you grab it now. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. Oh, yeah, and if you like the song from the uh, where the we did the bass guitar thing, I've got a three-hour video lesson on that. It's called Producing Prog Metal. You can check a link out for that as well. Uh, just want to let you guys know I'm planning on keeping the tutorials coming every Wednesday. Next week, I think we're going to take a look at FET compressors and see how those work. Should be pretty cool. I've got a couple of different types kicking around. I think they're FET compressors. Anyway, I'm going to do a little more homework. Um, we'll see what happens next week. Anyway, uh, stick with the series. I'm going to keep all kinds of tutorials coming. And do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Hope you got some use out of this episode, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Take care.